the brand was widely admired by Chinese uh, coffee in- enthusiasts who uh, turned into coffee industry people later they, la- later on. And um, they opened uh, 30 something in the first few years. And then they got investments uh, from capitals and um, opened another 100 some, some, something uh, across wow. Shanghai and uh, uh, main cities in, in, in China. But unfortunately, they are shutting down many of them uh, right. just re- recent years. So uh, at, th- at that time, we couldn't imagine these kind of brands will, will fail. Or they will face uh, like a such big uh, um, trouble or challenges or difficulties to them. This episode is proudly brought to you by Mapper Forwards Workshop. It's time to become a coffee consultant. Learn how to diversify your revenue streams and create freedom from your day job while saying goodbye to that alarm clock forever by becoming a consultant within the coffee industry or directly to consumers who have shifted towards home brewing and home roasting. Protect your income from challenging times in the coffee value chain by taking this course today. Go to mapperforward.coffee forward slash workshops or click the link in the show notes for details. Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Forward, friends. I'm your host, Lee Safar, and this is episode two of a five-part series with David Yan. David, we are talking from Busan, uh, Korea. We have been here at World of Coffee, Busan. Uh, how was your World of Coffee, by the way? Uh, it was good. Uh, I was uh, surprised to meet you, of course. <laughs> Likewise. Yeah. And uh, meet, um, meet you. I actually met more international friends than my Korean look friends, as I expected. <laughs> you know, that, <laughs> you know that. <laughs> yeah. that, that was the thing that surprised me. Also, yeah. I met more people from not Korea than Koreans. Here. North Korea? No, not. <laughs> I I'm met kidding, more I'm people. Kidding. Okay, great. From not Korea. You're yes, going to get yes. me into some trouble, mate. Easy. <laughs> um, yeah, coffee makes love. <laughs> coffee makes love. It does. <laughs> so let's sidestep that very quickly. <laughs> um, yeah. So in this series, we're talking about the coffee scene in China. And yeah. you are somebody who started your coffee career in the Australian coffee industry yeah. and you are now, um, you went back home to China, you are Chinese, you're based in Shanghai and you are working in a couple, you have your hand in a couple of different pies in the coffee yeah. supply chain. Um, in this uh, episode, we're going to talk about what the different types of cafes that exist in China. Yeah. And, and I want to preface this by saying, folks, that there seems to be a shift around the world in what's happening with different kinds of cafes. And what I'm curious about is because I'm I see it in Dubai, I'm starting to see it in America, I am seeing it in places like Saudi Arabia, uh, in different places in Asia, definitely here in, in Korea. I'd love to hear what the different kinds of cafes are in uh, in China. Uh, they are pretty much everything. As I uh, talked about in the past episode, we have domestic players. We have uh, serious professional brands. And um, also we have uh, international brands from nearly every country. I, right. I've, seen, I've seen brands co- uh, come in and uh, compete a few years and left. I've seen uh, brands... Um, turned into a supply company. And uh, I've seen brands still struggle and some successful and reached their targets or reached um, their target with their Chinese joint venture. Yeah. Um, so pretty much we see, um, of course, specialty cafe, um, uh, conventional, like uh, commercial cafes. Yeah. And also... Even like no human, like robot cafes, all those crazy, right. crazy. Ideas. Anyway, you see crazy ideas um, in Shanghai every day. Yeah. And mm-hmm. yeah. Um, uh, but in the past 10 years, it changed just dramatically. 
uh, especially Cafe boomed uh, nearly 10 years ago. And um, one of the most successful brands, uh, which we really uh, admired a lot, um, originally from Shanghai, but it was actually consulted by Sydney. Okay. Uh, um, by a Sydney coffee professional. And he's a friend to the uh, Shanghai uh, uh, specialty chain, a specialty brand's owner. So he guided him to open a specialty cafe, you know, like, uh, um, it's a, we, we call that front cafe, back roastery. Okay. It's like quite normal in, in uh, Melbourne. Taiwan. Yeah, in Melbourne, yeah, you roast as fresh as possible and uh, spy, um, like to serve your customers as fresh as possible. That's it's like a common standard. It mm -hmm. is kind of like a basic standard, common thing. Uh, but at that time, it was really shocking and surprising to to China industry. Many people learned from that, and many many people learned uh, cafe uh, like uh, owners uh, learned to. Even like grand on demand, that's quite like a f basic thing today. But <laughs> at that time, uh, the guy learned lots of like work routines from um, his his um, uh, coffee firm from Sydney. Yeah, and uh, the brand was widely admired by Chinese uh, coffee in industry guests who uh, turned into coffee industry people later they la later on and. Um, they opened uh, 30 something in the first few years, and then they got investments uh, from capitals and um, opened another 100 some, some, something uh, across wow. Shanghai and uh, uh, main cities in, in, in China. But unfortunately, they are shutting down many of them uh, right. just re recent years. So uh, at, the, at that time, we couldn't imagine these kind of brands will will fail. Or they will face uh, like a such big uh, um, trouble or challenges or difficulties to them. Why? So that's, that's how things change in China, how quick things can change in China. Why? Because of the price war. From, no, no. Why uh, didn't you imagine that they wouldn't fail? Um, because I we, we only think like a copy chain business. Uh, is long term because coffee is a long term business, yeah. Right. And uh, at that time, when they opened the first shops and uh, when they expanded, there was no lucky, there was no quality. Right. That's the biggest problem. There right. was no automatic coffee. So they didn't really have any competition that really gave them a run for their money. True. They were the most professional ones. Yeah. Yeah. And, th you know, this is what I'm seeing is an, is an I'm not going to say it's new, but it's been creeping an emerging trend that's shifting the direction of the industry, which is mm -hmm. we've gone from the coffee space being your neighborhood cafe, right? And we saw the, the, the quick service kind of thing being something that was in the fast food sector. So your mech cafe, those ca kinds of things uh, were pretty much in fast food mm -hmm. and uh, sitting and having a coffee in a cafe was more the cafe coffee connoisseur kind of thing. Like if you were into mm -hmm. coffee, that's what you did. Now we're seeing those two models merge. And what we're starting to see is uh, the profession of the barista. So, so the profession, the lack of labor has forced the progress of those two models merging. And mm -hmm. what you're seeing is the super adam automatic adaptation. I'm seeing here in Korea, a lot of uh, ordering, you walk into the store, you order off a, of a screen uh, at, at a lot of cafes um, in order to alleviate the labor of the person behind the bar. And there's one person behind the bar now because the espresso machine is super automatic. Um, these people are really just there to serve. We saw this coming and the lack of labor or the labor shortage is what kind of sped that up. And what you're, what we're seeing Come happening. Come on, China has 1 billion people. They will never be short of labor, uh, right? Well, 
uh, do uh, let me ask you this question. They may have one billion people, but do they have one billion people who want to do this kind of work? Not really, I think. And that's my point, yeah. right? Like. The, the reason we have a labor shortage is not because we don't have enough people to do the work. It's that we don't have enough people that want to do this kind of work. Mm -hmm. And this is why this labor shortage is not going away. Right? We are seeing a generation, Gen Z, are saying, I can be a content creator and get famous, whether it's a content creator on Instagram or it's a content creator on OnlyFans. Right? I can make a lot of money without having to stand on my feet and I get much more than just money from it. I'm getting famous. And they they don't realize the reality behind that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But that's what they're choosing over standing on their feet for minimum wage uh, mm -hmm. in an espresso bar. No, but that that's not what people want anymore. People want the quick win, the short win. They're not playing uh, the long game to build a career anymore. They mm -hmm. want to build a following online. And this is where we have the problem. And so what you're seeing is a convergence of this new cafe model with a whole bunch of venture capital or private equity that's coming into the industry. That's these people who are opening these businesses have vertically integrated businesses that benefit from them coming into this space. So mm -hmm. their reason for opening these places may not be the same reason you or, you or I would open a cafe. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. And uh, add on that, three reasons why um, China is running this new business model um, is uh, adapting this new new model is one is there's so quick uh, improvement with uh, automatic machines quality, efficiency. Right. Uh, second, um, Labor, um, uh, for the, um, say, I, I'm not sure whether you know China is super quick and efficient with and cheap with delivery. Oh, is it really? Yep, yeah, with delivery. And, uh, so, um, to send a copy, uh, from the cafe to a customer's hands in the office will cost what? 30 cents something. What? Yeah, something like that. And they have hundreds of orders to, to send every day to, to drive the like in an electronic bike something yeah to to deliver That's, wow it's just crazy cheap and also china's uh it like internet um third reason is china is very um advanced with uh online economy you, right. you must have heard of like Taobao and alibaba this yep. kind of like uh, e-business so they turned Positivity into e physics. Wow. You can so right. easily to uh, order the copy. Uh, uh, like e commerce. On the, on the application. Application. And uh, so, like the gen, what? Z generation? Yep. How you call it? Yep, Gen Z. They are, in China, they are just spoiled. Right. People and this get, is my get point. Lazy. Right? They, yeah. they don't, they're not going to work. They just lie there and order that's what's. Uh, a cup of uh, uh, coconut latte, something. Oh, sorry. <laughs> what? Did you say that? Anyone who's wa who's not uh, watching the video, uh, obviously we, we record this on Zoom. And in different countries, depending on where you are, Zoom takes cues from your body and mm -hmm. does things to the screen. And so when you lean back, what yep. it does is it makes um, – it should do fireworks like it just did. That's why we were distracted there because David had oh. fireworks all over him. Um, and if you do your thumbs yeah. up, mm -hmm. it will do a like kind of thing. Uh, yeah. So it's not doing any of it now, of course, because I'm talking about it. Anyway, um, mm -hmm. back to the the discussion. Um, in the next episode, folks, we're going to be talking. We're going to shift from the cafe model. And we're going to talk about the consumer because, as David was starting to talk about there. The, the youth in China are at home ordering their coffees off their apps. And where it's not only in China. That is happening where I live. Um, it's not quite so readily happening in Australia, but it's shifting that way. It's definitely happening in America. 
maybe not as much as it's happening in China, um, but it's definitely a trend that we need to understand, particularly mm. because these apps take so much of the margin of coffee. So it's an important part of the discussion. Join us in the next episode, folks. Peace, love, and peanut butter. Have an amazing rest of your day. I really hope you enjoyed this episode, friends. Please don't forget to show us some love by subscribing, liking, commenting, and most of all, sharing this podcast with your friends. Check the show notes for links, including our sponsors and our Patreon, and stay tuned for more great conversations on the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Forward.